Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of our God, we pray. O Lord, take away from us all coldness and all wanderings of our thoughts and fix our souls upon you and on your love. Amen. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow redeemed, there was a woman who found what she thought was the perfect birthday card for her husband, on the outside, it said, Sweetheart, you are the answer to my prayers. And then when you open up the card on the inside, it said, You're not exactly what I prayed for, but apparently you are the answer. I wonder if something like that was passing through John the Baptist's mind in our text for today. Hundreds, in fact, thousands of years have been spent by God's people waiting for God to fulfill his promise to send the Messiah, to send their Savior and their Redeemer. The Jews were expecting that this Messiah, also called the Christ, uh, would come and lead the nation, that he would vanquish all their foes, that he would establish for Israel a glorious kingdom that would have unending peace and prosperity. God had appointed John the Baptist to be the forerunner to that particular Messiah. And John would be the only prophet in all of Scripture who would have the opportunity to see the Messiah with his own eyes, to actually speak with that Messiah. To him was given the privilege of introducing Jesus Christ to the entire world. John was very faithful in his ministry. He preached to everyone who came to listen to him. He welcomed them all. He preached to the masses. He taught what God's Old Testament word said about the coming of that Christ and what he would do. And, and this John baptized everyone who believed the message that he proclaimed. He even boldly spoke truth to power, exposing a tyrant ruler's adultery. But then, as John went about doing his work, the world didn't change. And when Jesus came on the scene and began doing his own ministry, in some ways it seemed that, that things were going backwards because John ended up landing in prison, waiting for a death sentence, for his head to be chopped off. 
John the da- Baptist began to question what he had been doing in his ministry. Was this Jesus really the one whom we should have been expecting? Is he that Messiah? And Jesus responds to John the Baptist. John goes to the source. He goes to Jesus himself. And Jesus reply was to prove that he was that Messiah, that he indeed was the one that we are all waiting for. John the Baptist, when he preached during his ministry, ears perked up. John was a mighty and a very powerful preacher. He proclaimed a heavy dose of God's law, exposing people of their sins. And when people refused to listen to what he was saying, and they refused to believe him and to conform their lives to what the word of God taught, then John the Baptist threatened them. He threatened them with God's unrelenting judgment and punishment. He would say to them things like this, The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. He would serve them notice when they refused to give heed to his warnings. He would tell them the Messiah's winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. But after spending a couple of years in doing this ministry, that evil tyrant whom John had spoken truth to threw John the Baptist into prison. And while John was in prison, his own disciples would come and they would visit him and share with him reports of what Jesus was doing. And as John heard these reports, he he felt that that Messiah wasn't doing exactly what he expected the Messiah to do. Because, after all, what he heard was Jesus was, if anything, too Merciful. He wasn't casting wicked people into eternal flames. He wasn't cutting down depraved and corrupt tyrants. And so he sent two of his own disciples over to Jesus to ask Jesus, are you really uh, the one that we should be waiting for? Or are you the Messiah? Should we be expecting someone else? And when Jesus received that message, he Uh, did not show any disappointment to John at all. Instead, with a very loving and caring attitude, Jesus told him, Report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Jesus is quoting scripture, Isaiah, a part of Isaiah that I'm pretty sure John the Baptist was very familiar with. It was a vision which God had given to to Isaiah 700 years earlier, which precisely described the very things that Jesus himself was in fact doing. Jesus gave eyesight to people who had never seen so much as a ray of light from the time of their birth. Victims of paralysis were found walking, running, and skipping for the first time in their lives, all because of Jesus. People who had been deaf were able to hear their family members say, I love you again. Lepers who were stigmatized by society because of the rather disgusting nature of their skin condition and were run out of town were made completely whole, their skin healthy again by Jesus so that they were welcomed back into their communities. And then families mourning over the death of loved ones, would find their grief turned to elation as Jesus would raise their loved one back from life and and bring that person back to them again. These miracles of Jesus 
we're exposing the depth of the love that God has in his heart for a fallen and broken humanity. These miracles which Isaiah foretold give to us indisputable evidence that Jesus is the Messiah whom God has promised and whom God had sent. Now like John, Jesus also preached, but unlike John, Jesus' message centered far more on the gospel than on the law. Jesus spoke the good news, the gospel, to uh, those people in particular who were on the outside, those people who were ignored and, and looked down upon. Uh, when Jesus did his preaching, his message centered on his saving work to rescue lost and condemned creatures from the judgment of God that John the Baptist warned the people about. To those people who were filled with guilt and shame because of the sins that they had committed, uh, Jesus gave to them the reassurance of his love. He would say to them, the Son of Man has come to seek and, and to save those who were lost. He would comfort them by telling them, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So much does the shepherd love his sheep. He would say to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. But the greatest sermon that Jesus would ever preach was one that John the Baptist would never experience. And it was a sermon that Jesus did not preach behind a pulpit, but rather a sermon that Jesus gave when he hung on the cross on display for the world to see. The world that despised him. And his heavenly father, who rejected and abandoned and forsook him, bearing upon himself the guilt and the shame of all of humanity's sins, paying the eternal debt that is owed to a holy God. But when Jesus finished that sermon, dying on the cross, he would rise from the dead, and in that resurrection, he would show his complete and full victory over death, over hell, and over the power of the devil himself. Jesus, as great, or John, I'm sorry, as great of a man as he was, needed reassurance from Jesus. Because just like us, John at times struggled with his faith. We need that reassurance too. There are times in our lives when we become confused about what Jesus, what we think Jesus is supposed to do for us. We may expect Jesus to make this world a better place to live in or to make it safer for believers or to see to it that the environment that we live in is such that we will be welcomed with a joyful and peaceful response every time we tell others this gospel good news. But instead... Jesus told the crowd this. He said, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble because of me. Blessed are, are those people who, who don't fall down because they are disappointed in how I go about my work in being the Savior of the world. These words that Jesus is speaking are, are not really meant for unbelievers. He's talking about believers, many believers have fallen down and fallen away from Jesus because of their disappointment in him. Because they feel that he did not live up to their expectations or they did not spend the time in learning and hearing from Jesus what he exactly, the great things he exactly would do for them. We face far greater danger than losing political freedom. We face greater danger than being persecuted for our beliefs. We face greater danger than corruption and fraud being practiced in high places. The danger, the great danger that we face is doubt. 
In one of his sermons, the Apostle Peter said this. He said, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. That's it. Jesus is the only way to be saved. And so when our conscience uh, causes us to feel guilt because of sin, you can expect that doubt is going to be right there. He's going to step right into that situation and he's going to question for you whether that forgiveness of Jesus on the cross really still counts for you. Because after all, you have continued to sin even after becoming an unbeliever and you continue to do the same exact sins against God over and over again. When illness strikes and it lingers and perhaps it's painful, then doubt is right there to let you know, are you sure about that promise that Jesus gave, that he would never leave you or abandon you? Does it really feel as though Jesus is with you right now? When a great tragedy strikes, oh, the devil is ready to step in and whisper into our ears. You say God is love. If God really is love, why would he allow such evil, horrible tragedies to occur? How could there even be such a God? How was doubt defeated? Well, Jesus defeated doubt, the doubt in John's life, simply by speaking to him God's word. Because God's word is what shows us of what our Savior Jesus has done. God's word is what he has given to provide for us the good news that Jesus is a solution for every problem that we may ever have. When John the Baptist heard that message of God's word that came from Jesus, He was given clarity and understanding about Christ and about his future with Christ so that he received comfort and encouragement that his soul needed. In spite of the spiritual troubles that plagued John the Baptist, Jesus still had high words of praise for John. He said that John was not like a reed swayed by the wind. John the Baptist did not tailor his message to suit his audience. He did not care what a person's theological background was or where they stood politically. John also was described by Jesus as being a man who was not dressed in fine clothes. A more literal translation would be John uh, was not dressed in soft clothes. In other words, John didn't approach his ministry as a way to earn an income so that uh, if he saved up, he could enjoy a more comfortable life and uh, he could go home, enjoy a glass of wine, sitting around in his pajamas, reflecting on his day. No, John the Baptist had no home. He lived in a desert. He wore rough and crude clothing that certainly was not fashionable nor comfortable. And the reason that John lived that way was because he dedicated his entire life, day and night, in service to God. But what made John the Baptist truly special is that he is the only prophet whose coming God foretold. Jesus gave to John the Baptist what would be the highest commendation that any person could receive. Jesus said that among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. But then Jesus adds a strange comment. And he continues by saying but whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Jesus is is talking about us. As great as it may have been for John the Baptist to hear words of praise coming from Jesus, the Son of God. And and as great as it must have been for John the Baptist to have opportunity to actually see the Messiah and talk to the Messiah, what we have is actually even better. 
because John would never live to see Jesus accomplish that sacrifice on the cross and, and his resurrection from the dead. John would die before that. You and I have the entire record of Christ's accomplishments. We have the eyewitness account of Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, his sending of the Holy Spirit to his apostles on Pentecost, his gospel advancing throughout the entire world in the face of powerful and demonic opposition. Persecutors of Christians become missionaries, fishermen become the pillars of the church, monks defy kings and popes, kings and emperors fall to their knees and bow down to the truth of the gospel, and common Ordinary people endure threats and torture, humiliation, intimidation, and horrific death rather than giving up the salvation that they had received in Jesus Christ. Since what we have been given is greater than what John received during his life, shouldn't our faith be greater and shouldn't we be even more bold in our witness of Christ? Uh, Shouldn't we be found openly speaking of the wonders of our God to other people? Uh, Shouldn't we be dedicating ourselves to destroying and defeating the weapons that the devil uses like, like doubt and fear and shame and using those weapons to plague the world? Shouldn't we defeat him? Shouldn't we be found Uh, bringing comfort to those who are lost and confused and and living within immoral sin because they know nothing else. And shouldn't we be found responding to threats and hatred and violence against us in the way that Jesus responded? With mercy, understanding, compassion, and loving forgiveness You and I have been given the greatest privilege that any human being could ever receive to pave the path, clear the way for the gospel of Christ to enter into the heart of every person whom we encounter so that they may hear about the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Welcome back. I'm Nicole. There's a lot happening this month, so let's dive into it. Here's what's going on at Christ in December. Midweek Advent services are back, and services will be on Wednesday, December 2nd, 9th, and 16th at noon and 6.30. There will also be a German-English service on Wednesdays, December 23rd at 12 p.m. Come and help decorate the church for Christmas. Join us on Thursday, December 3rd, and Friday, December 4th to decorate the trees and church building. Many hands of all ages and talent are needed to help accomplish this. Please sign up in the gathering area if you can help. The Wisconsin Lutheran High School Steel Pan Band will help lead worship during services on Sunday, December 13th. WLHS President Ken Fisher will also lead a Bible class with special presentation in the Grand Hall at 9.10 a.m. that day. Lambs of Christ will hold its Christmas service on Friday, December 18th this year. Plans are being developed to hold a safe gathering or, if necessary, to present the service virtually. Regardless of the format, the children are excited to share the good news of Jesus' birth with their families and friends. Can you believe that Christmas is right around the corner? Christmas Eve services will be at noon and at 11 p.m., which is a candlelight service. On Christmas Day, we'll have a service of carols at 9.30 a.m. 
This year's New Year's Eve service will be held on the 31st at 5 p.m. Due to holiday service schedule, there will be no worship services on the 26th or on the 30th. See your newsletter for additional details and for the most up-to-date information. Now for a call update. Pastor Matt Henning has declined our call to serve here at Christ. A new call meeting has been set for Wednesday, December 2nd at 7.30 p.m. in the Grand Hall after the Advent service. Please plan to join us that evening. We will receive a new call list from our district president. That's all for this month. Thanks for joining me. For more details and more events, see your newsletter. Until next time, stay connected.